All right, back on the PSS 780, and I think this is more or less done. You may notice compared to the last video, quite a bit's changed. Um, most obviously, this giant piece of foil shielding that covers up the back of the keyboard scanning diodes, and this little transformer board that's now been glued into the centre of the uh, main motherboard, just with a bit of hot glue. We've got dedicated uh, jack outputs. This side is mono for the FM keyboard only. This side is stereo for the PCM drums only. So I've completely isolated uh, the two halves of it. Um, I spent quite a lot of time after the last video trying out things like different values of resistors and taking the transformer on and off with the FM output first of all to try and get the cleanest output, to try and get the least whine and noise on it. Uh, when I initially connected this directly up, um, the output was really hot, but to try and attenuate it by putting a resistor in series with it, it seemed to introduce more noise. After what seemed like hours, and probably literally was hours, of uh, moving around this uh, transformer board that I connected in, and all the bench was much like uh, the last video, just a sea of crocodile clips and all sorts. Uh, I tried moving this around and um, I managed to find uh, like a null point in the interference noise strangely right on the back of the seven second display. It's at an ever so slight angle because it really was that fine of trying to get the board just right where the whining noise would just cancel out in that null point. There's two transformers on this but I'm only using one of them couple of reasons I've not removed the second one. Uh, one is because these entire boards when they come actually in a little case like this with the fly leads on, they come from China directly for a couple of quid each. So it's virtually not worth actually taking that off. The second reason is um, it was so finicky to get this exactly right and it took hours to try and find the, the null point on the board that um, I just don't feel like removing this and then ending up with the noise again it, it works leave it alone so that unused transformer is going to stay there it's really not worth trying to remove it so I tapped off a point just at this hop amp it goes into the uh, transformer there through a uh, one UF capacitor and then a hundred ohm resistor uh, that's inside this piece of heat shrink and then comes out of the transformer to another hundred ohm resistor and then to the output jack. That seemed to be the happiest balance and I've got a really nice quality, uh, really low noise FM output from that point. I'll go over uh, in a short while uh, the exact points that I've, I've tapped out from. Now the drums, uh, it took quite a while to get a, a dedicated output from the drums that was uh, relatively low noise. The noise was really different to the FM side, whereas the FM side was generally plagued with the high pitch whining, which I think comes from the LED scanning matrix. The drum side, which is a lower output anyway, even completely stock, the drums are always quieter than the synthesizer side. So the lower output from the drum side, I could only find one point to tap off the left and right channel. That was just drums because it actually gets mixed at the second op amp there into the FM. So I could only find one point really that I could successfully tap off. And um, there was a little bit of whining noise in it, but um, more prevalent was what I can only best describe as the sound of a, a cassette deck rewinding, um, that kind of pitch of noise uh, that was really difficult to shift out of this one. Now I tried the same thing, I tried a second uh, transformer and tried moving that around and that actually made the hissing noise worse uh, so apart from a couple of again one UF resistors just on the back of this and I'll include a, a little picture of that um, this is directly tapped in for the moment now what I ended up doing is you may remember from the previous video I mentioned a giant piece of foil that I coated in uh, sticky back plastic um, to uh, with an exposed end and a crocodile clip on to have a ground, uh, a shielding uh, plate basically, to move around. And what I didn't try before was actually wrapping it over the keyboard. And it seems that the tape rewinding noise, if you like, that was coming from the drum side, 
seems to be coming not necessarily from the LEDs but actually from the keyboard scanning matrix because if I put a piece over this side and wrapped it around it really dropped that noise down I ended up running a piece of a couple of pieces of foil shielding and um, captain tape as well just to insulate right across uh, the diodes on the back. There's captain tape, you can probably just see in the corners of the shot, there's captain tape over the back of the diodes to insulate them and then I ran a couple of uh, strips of uh, copper foil, uh, copper shielding foil, usually used for guitars, I think that's why I got this for doing a guitar job. There's then um, a grounding screw and grounding strap here which I just undid um, put the foil in and then put the grounding screw back in and I've got full continuity between both pieces there and then put some captain tape over the, the edge of it just so that it doesn't short out against anything with the board. The circuit board does actually stop there so it's not too much of a problem. Um, the most difficult bit was getting around this keyboard connector so that had to be removed, I had to cut a slot and then um, put them back in. I was going to do the bottoms of the drum ones but they didn't seem to make as much difference I guess because they're not so close to the board. But um, I got a really good signal to noise ratio out of the, the drum section so um, I ended up with separated FM and drums um, much quieter in stock and I think there's been a slight decrease in the noise coming out of the speakers and headphone jack anyway. Again just to reiterate from the previous video what I've done here doesn't actually stop the headphones, speakers or line outs working. They work exactly the same as stock, the volume control and everything. These aren't affected by the volume control or the headphones being in or out or anything so um, you can do whatever you like with those and these will continue to work as, as fixed outputs. So these will be great for studio use. So all I've got left to do now is um, mount these into the, the case I had to go with a stereo jack on the drums because if you look where this board protrudes there isn't as much clearance despite the case being fairly symmetrical on the back there isn't clearance that this side because the, spe the edge of the speaker output on this board here is right there so I had to move the jack quite close to the the Yamaha badge I didn't want to drill through the Yamaha badge really and use a stereo jack instead of two monos um, so I'll just use a wire lead with that, that won't be too much of a problem. So, fetch the case. If this will show up in shot. Uh, I've got a couple of 12mm holes drilled for jack sockets in the back. And I've even labelled it up as well, if you can see there. Um, with a couple of Dymo labels, because Dymo labels make everything look way more legit. So. So just to show where I've actually done the tap offs, it's easy to do this with photos, so I'll cut into a couple of photos here. Something to bear in mind on this board, on the silk screen side, um, quite unusual, the component values are actually marked, but not the component numbers apart from ICs. Anything major um, is marked, uh, some of the transistors are, but things like the uh, resistors and capacitors I don't think are, the resistors definitely aren't, they're only marked by value which is a bit unusual, useful in some respects but it, that means I can't reference to an exact co component number that I've actually tapped off from. So just to show on the FM side, I've taken the signal output from the uh, right hand side of a 22k resistor and the ground side is from the left hand side of a 0 0.01 ohm resistor. Um, just above the op amp there or to the left as you're actually looking at the thing face on. Then on the drum side where it's a little more complicated because it's quite cramped and you have to support this board while, uh, while you solder it in, um, there's a couple of 2.2k resistors and the left and right signals are uh, from the uh, bottom side of those as again as you're looking directly at the unit. Um, they're from the bottom side of those resistors and then the ground point is on the third jumper along uh, from the left. I'll highlight all these with photos and as I said the FM side I've run into a uh, ground loop isolator essentially uh, transformer and each output is protected by uh, a 
one UF electrolytic capacitor and the signal goes into the positive side then out of the negative side into a 100 ohm resistor into the transformer out of the transformer into another 100 ohm resistor and then out and on the drum side uh, directly out into a couple of 1 UF capacitors and then straight out to the output didn't need any resistors on that side because it's lower output to begin with this side just drop it down a little bit I put a couple of 100 ohm resistors in there I'm aiming to use this for quite hot input um, audio interfaces and compressors so it should drive any plus 4 dB line level quite easily um, if you want to drop it down you could probably drop um, higher value uh, resistor probably in the output side uh, which should generate less noise but I'm happy to attenuate it later on I could have low passed these just with a little film capacitor um, across the signal and ground uh, which I think does happen in the amp board here because the output is noticeably brighter and cleaner from both of these um, but again I thought I'd leave it at full whack and then I can attenuate uh, with the studio gear um, as much as I want I'm happy with that to be a nice clean sharp output so the next thing is let's put it back together take it to the studio and let's record some demos of it